my finger You brought love like I've never known You give life to our children And to be a reason to go on Your Excellency, the President of the Republic of Kenya, Uhuru Muigai Kenyatta, Your Excellency, the Deputy President, Dr. William Ruto, Your Excellency, the former Prime Minister, Raila Odinga, all cabinet ministers, and all protocols observed. Good morning, it's still morning. Well, a lot has been said, and I won't say very much because we will just be repeating ourselves as family members because we enjoyed the same, same things all around. We already did a tribute, uh, the girls did a tribute for dad, which is in your programs, but, but individually I'll just sum up what my dad left with me. Dad, our dad, was a very special man in more ways than can ever be described. He instilled discipline in us and he didn't favor anyone when you misbehaved, whether you were a boy or a girl, and I would like to uh, remind Mike that some of us girls got equal discipline as the boys. And uh, his love for music. I am proud to say that I was always the one he asked to go and purchase the music, especially Christmas time. We would drive from, he would give me a driver from Nyeri and I would go to a shop that was on um, Moy Avenue, Assonance. Some of you from that, our contemporaries <laughs> might remember that. So I would go and make a selection. So we shared love for music, which then even our children today um, have come to love the same music. He taught us to work hard. He taught us to be well groomed all the time. And if you are not groomed, especially if you are going out, even if it was for a drive to Mount Kenya Safari Club during our days in Nyeri, he would, you would go back to the house and dress up properly, then he would take us for tea. He taught us to work hard. He taught us to be honest. He taught us that whatever you do, do it as if it was your own work. Even if you are employed as a clerk or whatever job you took, do it like it was your own. And that saddens me today that sometimes uh, I, find I found myself in um, positions where where you're working with people, but they just are so casual because they say, yo si yangu, and I remind them that you are here to do what you have to do and move on. It doesn't have to be your work. One other thing that I may add about his girls and his boys, but every time we all left college and you are ready to go to work, he knew that we all needed transport. And on my 21st birthday, uh, my gift was a car. And every girl here can attest that when they left home, they each got a, a vehicle because you needed to move around. And that was very special. Looking back now, I don't take it for granted because how many of us can give our children cars? 
we tell them to work hard and buy their own cars. So he was a brave man. He was a very brave man, whether it was political challenges, and maybe we were running scared or were worried, he would tell us, Apana Ogopa, you live once. He handled every challenge so bravely that with time, we too learned to be brave. He did whatever he did without fear or favor. In our home, he didn't favor anyone. And like my sister Angela has said, he loved our mothers equally. And I would often um, tease them when I'd find them having tea all together and they say, you guys are really special. I couldn't do that. So times have changed and maybe as time goes by, we will learn from our fathers that polygamy is not so bad. Growing up in a polygamous home, especially where you have a strong, a strong man, a strong father, who treats everybody equally, gives them equal chances, equal opportunities, then you won't go wrong. So, because I learned that from my father, not that I, want, I would want that for... <laughs> <laughs> but it is what it is <laughs> so one of the bravest moments was when he was very sick and I would go to see him even in his last days in hospital and I wanted to break down I was weak and he would say God loves us and God knows what the end result will be. So I would get encouraged. So dad, rest in peace, eternal peace, and we'll miss you forever. Thank you. Uh, Your Excellency, the President, Uru Kenyatta, Your Excellency the Deputy President, Your Excellency, the Right Honorable Prime Minister Raila Molodinga, all protocols observed. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Ken or Kenneth, as in Peter Kenneth, not Kennedy. <laughs> now, um, of course, when Mike came here, he talked of uh, my father's boxing skills, but he didn't disclose uh, who suffered. Uh, now, I wasn't the only one, but uh, uh, looking back, uh, I think I got the most of it. And uh, when uh, my other brother talked about uh, my father's love for, for Whitboard uh, meetings, we'll just, we'll just say, come along, and uh, we'll spend a good time in Nairobi having fun while he's in the board meetings. And then, uh, um, uh, like around Christmas, um, I remember we benefited all of us because to look at Nanuliongue at Christmas. Now, and uh, well, before Charles went to the, US, to the UK, um, would actually, he would actually get us to get suits, proper suits like the one I'm wearing. But uh, after Charles left, and I didn't do very well in school, Nikambio Sasa to me reduce to Kaunda suit. And in those days, counter suits for us who are wearing platforms and uh, flares just didn't work. Even the girl you are cheating now, she'll even abandon you. <laughs> now, um, let me go straight to the story of, uh, sorry Charles, I may take a little, a little longer. The story of uh, the nice car and, uh, the, uh, and the boxing. Uh, one Christmas after we were, coming, we were coming from Kisi and we had a farm, we have the farm in uh, Sotik. And um, at that time, um, there was tarmac on the main, uh, main road along Sotik, but to go into the farm, uh, we had to use a Land Rover. So dad had arranged for a Land Rover to come and, uh, so that he can park his new, brand new Mercedes. 
which uh, Mike always reminds me, it was KQB 966. He had parked it on the side of the road and he told me, we can't leave, we can't leave the car alone, so you're going to sit in here. The music was there, Kenny Rogers and uh, Charlie Pride. And uh, now these were the first cars uh, which had central locking, um, which we were also not getting used to, which we were just about, we were getting used to them at that time. And, and he had mentioned, I think, that should you feel you need to step out of the car, remove the key. But for some reason, because I was not thinking about the central locking cars, I felt, let me come out and stretch. As soon as I stepped out, I had click. Gary Lijifunga. Kifungui Kondani. Namze and the rest of the family had gone into the farm. Uh, somehow he got information that uh, I have uh, defied what he had said. And the car was, uh, the key was locked inside. And the Mercedes, was brand new Mercedes was on the side of the road. Nobody could help me. Now, he was informed that that had happened. So now when he was coming from uh, the farm with the Land Rover, to the junction, uh, he didn't even wait for the Land Rover to stop. <laughs> As it was slowing down, he already jumped out like uh, the security man I see around the president deputy. <laughs> he wasn't driving, so he came out and he came straight for me. Now, I was around from, I think around from four. When, when I was tall, probably I'd even reached his height or a little, a little taller. So, as he's coming for me, and, and I'm trying to look as helpless as possible. So he comes for me, then the punches begin. And he, he was very skilled with those punches. And uh, Muhammad Ali had, ju had just been knocked out by George Foreman uh, a few weeks earlier. And uh, what surprised me is that he even understood these ones of... Uh, I mean, I've always wanted to go up. I've always wanted to go up in life, but not that way. Now, the story doesn't end there, but it's about to end. He said, "Who you? He can't even keep small instructions. He's not going to ride with us in the Mercedes." Now, that Land Rover uh, had also brought some goats, which we were supposed to go and eat in Nyeri. So, Akasema, who you are taking here, Daniel? Now, and, and they should not follow us because the rest of the family was going to go through Nakuru and uh, have nice food in, uh, I think, Stag's Head. Or, right. So, Kasema, who you? Na driver? Nambuzi? Direct to Nyeri. So, I was, at the, I was at the back of the, the Land Rover. Tunangaliana Nambuzi. Hata yu Mbuzi. I think Mbuzi is going to sit on. No, yu mtoto ya mkubo na faya nini hapa nyuma. Anyway. Eventually, we were lucky. The farm manager managed to use, I think there was a bit of space on the driver's side, and fortunately, so it clicked. And uh, um, now, uh, and uh, I'm sure they went and had very good lunch in Nakuru. Uh, myself, we were going through Nyaururu. I think we stopped somewhere, like Daragua. <laughs> and the, the, drivers, uh, the driver and the bodyguard who I was with, Wakanuo Mahindi Chamusha Apo, Wakanyandi Mtoto Amukuba, Sukulata Wehi. So I was chewing it in the back of the Land Rover and the goat was wondering, oh, no, kule peke yako pamoja hapa. Anyway, before I sit down, uh, Charles, you're going to have to give me a minute. And I, di I didn't ask if I can read this is uh, from Honorable Beth Mogo because you might have said no and I have no one to appeal to because it's the only appeal. Amelala hapa. Ukikata, hakuna mutu nitaendea. Hocha tu nisome arakaraka. This is from uh, Honorable Beth Mogo who is uh, very close to the family and the grandmother of my uh, two older daughters. If, I, if you can allow me to read it very quickly. The friendship between Honorable Nyachaya's family and ours dates back very many years. We got to know him when he was a PC, and I called him PC always, even as he, was, as he rose through to higher rank. Because he left an indelible mark as a PC due to his charismatic leadership, with time, we ended up being in laws and respectably called as Korera, Korera. That is in laws in Kisi. We have since remained friends throughout, and we share grandchildren together. That is Mwango, my first daughter, and Wamboi, my second daughter. From that vantage point, we came to understand Mzee Nyachaye very well. And we can say that rarely does a person achieve so much from a tender age and yet still be able to maintain a sense of selflessness in public service. But this is how the late Honorable Nyachaye lived his life. 
He belongs to the first generation of career civil servants who are firmly committed to good governance in public service immediately after independence. In his long journey in leadership, he served this country with an equal perfection, never tiring to actualize his leadership abilities until his retirement. He has therefore left a rich legacy of commitment and dedication in leadership, as well as excellence in public service. This legacy is worth emulating by the younger generation in order to enrich governance and the, the quality of leadership of our country going forward. We join his family today in celebrating his life. During his difficult period, during, sorry, during this difficult period, it is our prayer that God will strengthen the family and give you fortitude to bear the loss. May Mzee's soul rest in the loving arms of the Almighty God. Thank you. Mugitaka zingine stories zingine ntawambia badai. Asante. Wataka wafuata ni Moses Nyachai, Chief Nyandusi Nyachai.